Welcome. I'm so glad you joined me. We are doing the Great Tank Sew Along. Today I'm sewing the Havana, just the tank version. Um, the same instructions would apply though if you wanted to sew the dress, um, either the, the short dress or the maxi. So I'm going to be sewing two different versions. One is going to be where I cut it off um, for a gathered skirt, but I'll still, when I do the gathered skirt, I'll just do it in a top length. Um, and then the other one I'll be doing just the, the regular top. So you're going to need your front and your back. And for your front, I cut on one side of my dart so that once I've cut out my fabric, I can just fold this back and then I can mark where I want my dart. And then on the back, you are going to have um, two different options of where your fold will be. So if you are doing the racer back, then your fold is right here. If you are doing the low back, and the low back means that your bra is showing. It's hitting really low on your back and showing a lot of your back. It's wonderful to wear with like a swimsuit as a cover up to quickly throw on. Um, if you are doing, I do mine with just a straight back. So it's kind of in between the two. So I find where my arm side is and then I just fold this down and I make it straight across. So before I even fold it, I get my ruler and I draw a line and storming. Look at that here. Um, I get my ruler and I um, make sure that it's even along the fold line so that I can draw a straight line so that the where I'm folding it is straight across and that this makes a 90 degree angle. And when I do this, I go ahead and use the wider back version. It just gives more ease um, in the garment. So this is what your two pattern pieces are going to look like if you are doing a straight back front and a top length front and top length back. If you're doing the racer back, it's going to look like this. If you're doing the racer back, you'll need the racer back binding. It's just a small piece. Um, and if you are doing any option whatsoever, you're going to need your front binding. And this is cut on the bias. So if you're cutting on the bias, that just means that you're finding your selvage um, of your fabric. And so this is your selvage. And I fold it to where it's at a 90 degree angle. So like this, and then you're cutting across. So your binding is going this way. So I'll also show you that whenever I go to cut it out. Um, but first off, your first step is gonna be to pick out your fabric and whichever fabric I love like Rayon Chalet or um, any kind of fluid fabric. If you use like a, a quilting cotton or something with a lot of um, weight to it, it's gonna be more tent-like on you. Um, if you use something fluid, it's gonna be comfortable um, and figure flattering. So um, with this fabric, it is more shifty, so it takes more patience to sew it, in my opinion. So is what you're gonna wanna do is starch it. So the first thing you're gonna do is iron it really well, and when you press it, you're gonna use starch throughout it. And the starch kinda helps to stiffen it while you're sewing the more the merrier because the more starch, the more um, that it's going to be cooperative for you. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be ready to cut. Okay, it is time for us to cut out some bias. So the first thing you're gonna do is identify the selvage of your fabric and you're gonna put that along the long ways and then you're gonna take one end of the selvage, it doesn't matter which, and then you are going to fold it to where it makes, the selvage is making a 90 degree angle. So, you're just gonna keep folding it like this until this part is nice and long. And then, once you have it the length that you want, we're cutting along this long edge. And see, the reason we are is because along the bias, fabric has the most stretch, or this woven fabric does. It has no stretch at all along the selvage. So that's one way that you can find your selvage is it is not gonna give. It has just a little give um, crosswise of the selvage, but along the bias, you've got a little bit of stretch there. So that's the reason we're cutting it there is it gives us more movement. So if you're doing view A or view B, which are the racer back or the lace up back views, you're going to cut two strips. Um, the, the chart starts at, they're all one and a half inches on the width. 
the chart starts at 24 and a half inches on the length for those views. If you are doing the low back or even the one that I'm doing where I just cut straight across the back, um, you're going to cut um, where it starts at 66. So it says cut just one long strip. And if you're cutting one long strip, you're going to probably need to piece it because you're not going to get that length on here. So whenever I fold it like this, I end up getting that because of the fold. So I don't just cut one strip. Um, so you're going to just make it to where it's even. And I just cut that part off like this. And this fabric's a little bit shifty just because of the nature of it. So you're going to do your best to line everything up. And if it's not perfect, then it's okay because it's just a very small strip that's on, that's cut on the bias. So if you're doing view C, you more than likely are going to need to join your strips together. You're going to need the length because um, you couldn't get them all in one. So is how you're going to do that is you're going to figure out your right side. So this is my right side of each. And you could just put them right sides together and then do it that way. Um, I'm a quilter though, so I don't do it that way because you want to reduce some of the bulk. Because when you fold all that to make bias, um, the binding, you'll have this one really bulky seam. So is what you're going to do is you're going to put them right sides together like this to where they are at a 90 degree angle. And then you're going to sew from one corner, from this corner right here, and then you're going to sew to this corner. And you're going to do it exactly in this corner. Um, some of these fabrics can be a little shiftier, so you just want to move them around and make sure that you're in the corner. And then it, see mine moved as soon as I put it down. So I'm gonna put it where I want it to be. I'm gonna back stitch. And then I'm gonna go to the other corner. Okay, and so now when you open it up, it's gonna look like this. And it'll be one continuous strip. And I'm gonna cut off this back triangle and I will press it open. And so now let's go to the ironing board. And at the ironing board, we're going to make this into bias. Okay, now we are ready to make this into binding. So is what we're going to do is we're gonna take with the wrong, we're gonna have the right side facing down and the wrong side facing us. And we're going to um, push to where each of these outside edges are touching in the middle. And you can definitely use a bias, um, the binding maker. I have one, I don't even know where it's at because I rarely end up pulling it out. I, I've learned to just quickly do it by hand. So as you fold it in, you are just ironing it, pressing it down. See, so it's this is what it's looking like as you iron it down. And you can see where I didn't get it exactly in the middle on all of them and it's fine. Um, I just keep trying to make it as even as possible to where it's all in the middle. now I've done my entire strip like this and you can see it's all pushed into the middle so on the right side it looks like this and then the wrong side has part of the right side pushed like this and now I'm going to iron it um, where it's like this so I'm gonna put them together and iron it it's really dark so I hope you can see that so I'm just folding it in half so that these raw edges are on the inside and once I have it all folded in half, I'm going to take this entire strip and I'm going to iron it to where it's flat. And then this is the same, this is the binding that you're using throughout. So for your front neck, for your straps, um, anything that calls for binding. So I go ahead and just make one long strip of binding and then I go through and cut all the different pieces that I need. Um, and so I'm going to finish ironing all this flat and then um, we, can, we have our binding ready. We're ready to sew our top. 
I am at my machine. I am ready to get started. The first thing I'm going to do is sew my darts. So I've marked mine on to the wrong side of my vermin. I used a marker. It's really faint, but I can see it. See, you can see a little bit of it right there. Um, it's a water soluble marker. There's lots of different ways to mark darts. It's just my favorite method. And I'm going to put it to where it's right sides together. Um, this fabric is really kind of see-through enough that it's easy to tell. And so I will put my bottoms together and then I will find my point and I'll kind of just pinch it right where my point is like that. And then I'll see that my lines lined up and I start sewing right at the edge and I backstitch at the bottom, but I do not backstitch at the point of the dart. So you're just gonna sew with a straight stitch sew off your fabric and try not to sew at a sharp angle when you end but do it as gentle as you can and since this is a woven fabric you do not want to trim your dart there are certain projects where I've trimmed darts before but not on a woven because then you would just leave a raw edge there so you want to leave your dart in place so I'm going to sew both darts and then we'll go to the ironing board and iron them so I'm going to do the same thing on my other one I'm going to put my fabric right sides together I'm going to line up this bottom line. I'm going to find, once I've lined up that line, I'm going to find the, the point of it and just pinch that there. And it lined my lines up for me. So to iron my darts with the ironing board, I grab one of my kids' stuffed animals and I lay it over that. Usually the bottom of the stuffed animal is my favorite. I don't know, there, I know there's gotta be like a more technical way to do it. And I iron the dart down. Well, on this one actually, you might press up, but yeah, no, I iron down um, towards the hem. So you're just gonna press it nice and open. So see how nice it drapes over that stuffed animal. And then I just get in there and press it really good over the stuffed animal. And see how nice and nice it presses that. I'll do the other side. I'm sure this isn't the technical way to do it using a stuffed animal, but there's an actual tool they make to do this. But I'm not going to buy it because there's a ton of stuffed animals laying around my house. So I drape it over the, bo the bottom, the bum of the stuffed animal. And I give it a nice, nice press. Hopefully not everyone's laughing at me like, that is not how you iron a dart. But I think it turns out so well when I iron my dart that way. Okay, we're done with our dart. So the next step that we're going to do is we are going to finish our neckline. We're going to, and there's a pattern piece of all that bias binding that we just made. We're going to cut that pattern piece off of it. And we are going to apply it here. We're going to start, actually, we're going to put the wrong side up. And um, I'm going to grab the one that I cut. So this is the strip that I cut. I'm going to open it up. So I had ironed it to where it was flat like this. And you're going to open it up all the way. And on one of the sides, you're going to apply it to where the right side is facing the wrong side. And you're going to need to stretch it around this curve. And it, it, and it will stretch. Um, so make sure you stretch it. And you're going to be sewing in that where that crease is, that first crease. You're going to sew all in there and then we'll wrap it around the neckline and stitch it down on the right side. Okay, so let's get to the machine. Okay, we are at the machine. I have the right side of my binding. I have it all opened up and I'm going to be stitching in that crease and it's with a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'll start and back stitch. And as soon as you back stitch, you're going to want to start you're not like yanking it, but you are, you see how it has them give? You are pulling it so that it wraps around there nicely, paying attention that your needle is going down into that fold where you, or I guess you wouldn't call it a fold, you'd call it a crease, the crease where you ironed. And you can see I'm straight 
stretching that binding to make it around that neckline. You don't want to stretch it so hard that your fabric puckers. You just want to give it a nice firm stretch. And if you're not sure how much is the right amount to be um, stretching, then um, pin before you start sewing. I'm not a big fan of pinning. Sometimes I'll pin like the center to get an idea. But anyways, okay, so now that I have it applied to the wrong side of my fabric, it'll look like this. So my top, the wrong side of my top is facing me. And then I can wrap this binding around like this. So on the right side, it looks like this. And then I'm wrapping the binding over that seam. And then you want the binding to cover your stitch line. And once it covers your stitch line, all you're doing is sewing it down. So I am just, whenever I wrap it around and stitch it down, I'm making sure it goes over my previous stitch line. Because you don't want those to show through the front. And by nature, you're having to stretch a little bit. But you really don't want to stretch that much. Just enough to get it all to lay flat. There you have it, your neckline is bound. So now I'm ready, now that I have that bound, I'm gonna sew my side seams. I'm gonna get the back of my top and I'm gonna lay it where the, the back of the top, the front and the back are right sides together and then I'm gonna sew all along my side seams. Okay, now that I've sewn my side seams with my regular sewing machine, I used a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I'm going to go over them on my serger, and I, I never sew a woven only on my serger. I always use my regular machine first, and then I finish the edges. If you don't have a serger to finish your edges, then you're going to want to use a tight zigzag just to go over your seam so it doesn't fray. So you're going to see on my seams that I have my regular stitch line and then this is just to make it to where um, it doesn't fray all in the wash. Okay, now that we have that finished, all we have left to do is our straps. On this one, I'm gonna do the adjustable straps. So I'll show you how to do that and after we're finished with our straps, we'll be ready to hem. My ironing board right after sewing my side seams and I just wanted to show you how important it is that you press your seams whenever you finish when you're sewing a woven garment. So I pressed my seams to the back um, away from the dart and I did that on both of my side seams. Um, and then now I can move on to sewing my straps. So I'm going to be putting my adjustable straps in. So that means I'm going to need three different pieces. I'm gonna need out of my bias binding that we've already prepared. I'm gonna cut a 10 inch strip for, let me move the camera. I'm gonna cut a 10 inch strip for one strap in the back, a 10 inch strip for the other strap in the back, and then all the binding that I have left, I'm going to use to, um, to do the entire back. So I'll put the middle of that strip here, and then it will go all under the arm, and then we'll just be extra here. And I'm going to do that on both sides. So it's just one long strip that goes around. And if you're doing the low back option, then you'll just have the one long strip that goes all along here and then long strip out there. So I have my my binding applied on the wrong side of my shirt. One thing I, I didn't mention, but that I do, is that I um, stretch my binding when I'm going, especially under like the underarms areas. I'll give it a nice pull, kind of the way I did on the neckline, um, because I um, I want those areas to not gape out. 
and that is one way that you can help keep your underarm areas from gaping, especially on a dra drapey top like this. Okay, so now that we have it on the wrong side, all we're going to do is to fold it over like this. And so both edges will have a crease now. And so we're gonna top stitch it from the right side. So you're going to top stitch, um, you're also gonna top stitch all of this, but I don't top stitch this part until I find out how much of it I'm gonna need since I cut it so long. If you had an exact amount, you would go ahead and just start here and do one long top stitch. Um, but since I, I just kinda did one long one, I will only top stitch on the part that's already connected to my top. And I'm gonna do that from the right side. So I'm just gonna be folding this over and then going all along. And so this is the front of my, or the right side. This is the front and then this is my, this is my dart, my side seam and all along the back. So I'm doing this in one long sweep. And once I get this sewn down, we'll be ready to try it on and see where we want our straps. Now that you have your piece sewn, um, you're gonna grab your ring first and you're gonna put it on one end. This will be the top of the strap. And then you're going to fold the fabric underneath it like this. Then you're gonna set that down. You're going to get your slider and put it on the other end and you're gonna come from the bottom up out over the little hump in the middle and then you're gonna feed it through that. And then you should have it looking like this. You're going to take your slider all the way to the top. And then now you're going to feed this underneath. There you go. And once you have both pieces fed through, all that you're gonna do now, is see you have this piece hanging out is you're gonna fold it towards your ring like this. And then you're gonna sew it down. You're not sewing it through both though. You're only sewing it to the back one that it's touching. So just, to, I use like a zigzag stitch or something since there's raw edges right here. Um, I You can fold them down just a little bit and then tuck them under and then zigzag over that. But this is gonna secure this part down. So I'll go sew that and I'll be right back. Okay, so now you're gonna get your top and you're gonna lay it with the wrong side facing up. The right side is on the inside. And you're going to be attaching your strap to the back. I've marked where I want mine to be. So I'm going to put, you can see where I've done all that zigzagging and the ugly side um, is right there. And then the right side has the slider facing out. So you want to put the right side down and then you're gonna put this right here and then I'm going to fold the bottom in just like um, a quarter of an inch if that and then it's covered my marking and I'm just going to do a few bar tacks over it to secure it in place. Now that I have um, my straps attached on the back I am feeding through my front straps so right now I have it turned I'll turn it right side out so you can see everything so this is what my back looks like. And I, I zigzag, but the straight stitch would actually look better right there. And then I took my strap that's coming from the top and all I did was go and loop it under and I clipped it. I tried it on to make sure that, and I tried it on with the slider in the middle and then I set it to where I liked exactly where it was at in the middle. So that gives me room and more room for adjustment. And then I am just going to do some stitching right here to hold it down and cut off any excess. I'll probably cut it off like just right above that and then fold it under so that the raw edge is kind of um, concealed in it. So I have that part closed and I made a mark whenever I tried it on, you know, where I wanted to have the fold. You can't see it because this fabric is so dark. Um, and then now I'm just going to um, take where the, the ring is that matches with that shoulder and you could also crisscross them if you wanted. You just have to make sure that you left it long enough to be able to do that. Um, and then I'm gonna take that, make sure I'm on camera, and then I'm gonna wrap it around the ring. And then once I've wrapped it around the ring, 
I can um, just sew it down. And when you sew it down, you just want to make sure that since you have this raw edge that you fold the edge under. You can also fold the edge to the be inside, um, whichever one you prefer. And then I'm just going to stitch that closed right there. And then I have my I have this one done. Make sure that nothing, your strap is not twisted before you sew it down. Okay, and then you just need to hem. When you hem, you just fold under a quarter of an inch to the wrong side, and then another three quarters of an inch. But try it on, you might need less or more than that. Um, anyways, thank you for sewing with me.